What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another Game of Thrones a card game tournament starting for you. This time we're at Rochester, New York at Millennium Games. This video is brought to you by these awesome people that support the channel at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. In this one we have Scott playing Greyjoy Reigns of Castamere against Steve playing Stark The Wars to Come. So Scott is local to the Rochester, New York area. Played with him uh, a bunch of times in the past. He has been on the channel a bunch of times in the past. We've seen him play before. Always, always running Greyjoy. He's a uh, he loves the Greyjoys, as do I. Um, and we got Steve on the right. And I just want to give a shout out to Steve. It was nice to meet him. Uh, came all the way from the Boston area. Uh, it was cool that he came up to our tournament. We had 31 players. Uh, it was nice to meet him. He's also a Patreon of the channel, so you can thank him in the comments below for helping uh, make these videos possible. And it was definitely cool for both these guys to be playing on camera here, as all players who play on camera for any YouTube or Twitch channel, you guys are all awesome. Without you, we wouldn't have this content to watch and play and analyze here. So for setup, we have a Iron Islands Fishmonger. We got a big 7-cost Asha, a Sea Tower, and an Iron Fleet Scout on the left. And for Stark, we have Corset Cat, two Winterfell Stewards to uh, help out with some Mekon. And then we got a Northern Armory down there to help out with some Mekon also, and a single stand. So we got Late Summer Feast there, you see flipped on the Greyjoy side into Time of Plenty on the Stark side. So they're both drawn three cards, of course, from Time of Plenty. Late Summer Feast will help some card draw, I'm sure, in the future for the opponent, uh, if they remember that Force Reaction. Stark player winning initiative. I think he's chosen the Greyjoy player to go first. So Greyjoy Reigns was a deck I used to win Canadian Nationals uh, last year in 2017. You don't really see it much anymore since Wars to Come came out. And if you're going to play your solo faction and no banner, you might as well play Wars to Come. Seems to be the theory. Uh, as... As the results for most tournaments, you can see more than half of the players are playing uh, worse to come. <laughs> so we got uh, three Iron Fleet Scouts out there now for the Greyjoy player. He's seen all three up front. They cost nothing, so he just throws them down. And we have Euron Greyjoy here on turn one, so two seven costers. Just like that. And he plays out a sea bitch there. And he's putting a card in the shadows there at the top of your screen. You see that face down card. Uh, for two gold, and he's going to sit on one over to the Stark player for his marshalling. I also want to give a shout out to Jim for being our tournament organizer there, as always, over the last five or so years. Uh, every year going down there for the store champs and the regionals. He's always running a good tournament. It was a decent tournament. Uh, yeah, it's a great store, Millennium Games, if you're in the Rochester, New York area. You guys should check it out. It's a great, 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 great store. So we got the Winterfell Stewards uh, kneeling down here. We see Rob Stark in the hand of Steve. And that is who's going to hit the board with a duplicate. See a winter is coming there in his hand also. The Greyjoy player is ready for that. <laughs> Caught me off guard once at the tournament, I believe. This is very po very popular in Stark using that winner's coming. It's always been a great event since the core set. Just makes sense. Raising your claim for a buck. Why not? And it looks like Gates, Gates of Winterfell, I think that uh, location is there. Or not. 
It's either the reveal card and draw it, or it's the one that gives a strength buff to characters. But I think it's Gates of Winterfell. We'll find out shortly, I'm sure. So yeah, they're going to do the Force Reaction here. He wins an Intrigue unopposed. Looks like Scott's unsure here. He's asking someone else. But yeah, the Force Reaction happens first for sure. And then the Range Trigger will happen, which he's going to do now to hide up that disadvantage. So he's going to look through his... Looks like he has all his plots together here. He's just got to make sure he flips only a Scheme one. And a filthy accusation to take Rob Stark down. So I think he's probably going to avoid doing a military challenge here so he doesn't just stand everyone back up off Rob Stark. And then uh, there's six skins coming off the top on a pillage. And he only has... Yeah, he only had one in the discard. They, they missed entry claim. They just caught it there. He grabs a frozen solid. And then, of course, Asha only getting one card... Actually, should be two cards he gets to look through now that they, they did that in the wrong order. But he just drew the top card, assuming only one was in the discard. But at that point, it would have been two. So he should have been able to look at the top two and choose one. So interestingly, he does a military challenge, like I said, he shouldn't do. And kills the Winterfell Steward, which lets Rob Stark just stay on the board back up. So he kind of did that in a goofy order. Probably should have did the military first. And then he would have had extra search cards from Asha there from the pillage off Euron. So yeah, range trigger kind of wasted there. That's too bad. And now we have a military challenge coming in on oppose. And yeah, he's going to do winners coming and raise the claim on the military challenge. So let's see if Greyjoy player has those saves. Sure. He's always going to cancel. He's got the hands judgment. Should have got an unopposed there too, I think. It's that first round of a tournament. Always, always some wonky stuff happening. I know... I know even I, to this day, I just, you, you know, I'm running around trying to set up cameras. I sit down on my first game. Always so many wonky things happen. It's like you, you need that, like, first game to warm up for a tournament, I find. So these guys might just be, I don't know, maybe a little nervous or maybe just have that tournament jitters or just a little, you know, haven't, haven't sunken into the groove yet of the tournament here. So they're doing things kind of wonky order, uh, a little out of order, and... Uh, So we just got an unopposed power challenge there. And I think they tie on dominance. So the Stark player is up 4 to 2 on the uh, Greyjoy player. And yeah, that is definitely the Gates of Winterfell. Uh, is that two cost location there uh, beside the Northern Armory for the Stark player? And we have Valar Morghulis flipped by the Stark player. He says bye bye to Euron, bye bye to Asha. Unless he's got saves, which he doesn't. And we have on the other side, we have Barring the Gates played to prevent characters from coming into play off card effects. <laughs> And boom, just like that. Caught the Greyjoy player with his pants down, killing Asha and Euron. Let's see if the Greyjoy player can recover from this. Did play a five gold plot, which is decent. He has a sea tower, but... It's only second round here, so it's not like he's built up a huge economy base. 
Let's see a Tris Botley in hand, a Stony Shore Raider. And you look across, you see Valar Morghulis, you think there's no claim, so he can, he can marshal out, you know, a single character and feel kind of safe, you'd think. But we know March to the Wall could uh, could hurt next round if that is the case. Or we've seen Winter is Coming uh, is in the Stark Player's deck, so he could raise the claim. So he puts out Tris Botley for four. And the cool part with Tris Botley is he could take that Winter is Coming out of the discard pile and make sure it doesn't happen. That would be a smart play, I think. So he pays two for the Stony Shore Raiders, who's got at least two characters on the board, spends all his econ. An interesting play he might have been able to do there. He's going first, so the Stony Shore Raider could get bumped up by six strength. He could have possibly sea bitched the Northern Armory to choke a little bit of econ, only leaving the Stark player with two gold, but again, he just played a Heart Tree Grove. It's only three gold, so let's see if he, he has a cheap enough character to play. But I mean, if you can, if you can choke him out so he couldn't play anything there by stealing that uh, northern armory, and he's unable to play a character, you might be able to push through a military challenge and kill Rob Stark. At least that's what I would have been. I would have been thinking that 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 route. But then again, hindsight's twenty twenty. I'm watching here, you know, sitting back, nice and relaxed here watching this game I don't so he's got a Bolton flare in hand so I, I, I don't know how much he costs straight up uh, he's a three coster so yeah he would have been able to put the Bolton flare out minimum so never mind cancel that <laughs> and we know Stark has lots of cheap characters you get Arya out there brand that kind of thing We've already seen two Winterfell stewards. He didn't slap one out right away here, so he probably doesn't have the third. Might not have been the best sea bitch pull, but yeah, he's able to play Last Earth Scouts, so that's that's a bigger body. He wouldn't have been able to play that military body, that's for sure. But also the other thing, even if he did play one tiny character and he had to kill it for claim and left Rob Stark alone, then you're setting up a nice march play next turn, assuming you have it. So he does grab the winner is coming, like I said, that's a smart play. Take it out of the game for Triss. So we got a military challenge coming in here. It's going to have to force both these guys to kneel, I think. But then again, you kill... Worst case, you pull. Eh. Yeah, you kneel both, you fully defend. He's got to count all these Iron Fleet scouts out. He can add six strength there, bringing him up to eight. So he's got to defend with both for nine. Yep, he's got to do it. Yeah, what a different game if he would have stole that Northern Armory. I, I truly believe he would have been able to get a military claim through here. So Rob Stark gains a renown, then we got a power challenge in here with Tris Botley. And the power challenge will go unopposed. So he's going to do his gates here, sees an Arya, draws it. I don't know if he has any challenges. He's got no money left, so I don't see anything happening here. If somehow he could sneak a character in, it's going to come into play. Or it can't come into play, actually, because of barring the gates. He could use his Northern Armory to stand, though, which, yeah, it looks like he's going to do. And there's Rob Stark standing up, and he's going to come back on a military challenge. And that'll go no defenders, no claim, of course. 
Should get a renown on. Yeah, should get a renown on Rob Stark. Yeah, there he got it. He thought he had, he thought he had claim, but he didn't. So they they caught it at least. And yeah, push on dominance. Greyjoy player at three, Stark player at six. Yeah, it looks like the Stark player is hit with his five reserve off of Valar Morghulis. He's going to have to chuck some cards here. And he throws away the Bolt and Flare. Do you get crazy and just Valor back here and kill Rob Stark? <laughs> it looks like he's debating on a trade routes here, I think the Grey J player is. He's going to try to build up a board again. Cash in on the six, seven, seven locations that are out on the board. Eight, eight locations. Northern Armory down there on the bottom. So that should be a nice 10 gold pull total off the trade routes. And yep, trade routes into trade routes, so they're both going the same route here. So Great Drive players choosing himself to go first. And yeah, they're both going to collect the 8 gold off the trade routes here. So seven gold. Looks like we got King Balon coming in here. Uh, he takes the milk uh, that was just thrown away for taxation. He takes that out of the game with Tris Botley's effect there. So milk can't just be thrown down onto King Balon after playing him there. So he's going to save four on the Greyjoy side over to the Stark player for marshalling. So four costs. Winterfell is out on the board. So all the Stark characters are getting a uh, plus one strength buff. See the Drown God fanatic there in the Greyjoy player's hand. So that'd be a nice, uh, nice use to cancel Rob Stark's stand ability. Would be pretty cool. Assuming Winterfell doesn't block that uh, on that challenge. <laughs> So Arya right, start coming in play, getting the trigger, of course. He's debating the Drowned God Fanatic there on the dupe on Arya. But yeah, I, I, yeah I, don't, I don't think you cancel that unless you're like in a good spot, you got saves, and you're about to Valor next turn, and you want to catch Arya without a dupe. That'd be nice, but I think Rob Stark's cancel is, is much better, or Rob Stark's stand is a much better cancel. If you can catch the Stark player with his pants down after he's knelt out a bunch on his board and assuming he's going to stand it back up. But well, there's another Northern Armory, so some extra stand on the board now for the Stark player. But then again, if Winterfell is used right now, uh, the Stark player doesn't have a Winter plot, so Winterfell will block him triggering anything in that same challenge that he uses Winterfell on. And I don't know if there's any winter scheme plots that might be played in the Reigns deck. I don't even know if any of those exist, to be honest. Oh, we have a, uh, what is it? I forget the name of those guys. The guys, the Shadow Greyjoy guys that come out. He's going to pick a, he's going to pick a card cost, reveal the hand, and discard anything from the hand. But he didn't hit. 
I don't know what he chose, maybe one cost, but we see he had like a two, three, and a four cost in hand, I think. Just quickly saw a begging brother there. Not sure what else, but it, it was a miss. But at least he has knowledge of his opponent's hand. So, military challenge uh, with Balon, not kneeling to attack since there's no king across the board. Nighttime Marauders is, is Greyjoy character's name. I'm trying to remember it. I'm staring at the card. I know these guys. I've been playing with them in my decks uh, recently. Ever since they came out, actually, I've had at least a couple in my decks. Um, a Greyjoy decks. Even worked them into a Martell deck for a while. So he's used Winterfell. So yeah, so he's defended with Rob Stark. He's triggered Winterfell uh, at the start, so they, they, none of them can do effects during the military. And uh, he defends successfully. So he used the Winterfell there to block those Iron Fleet scouts from triggering, which was a nice, nice play. And he wouldn't be able to trigger Balon's ability That's either. Just for the challenge, yeah. I mean, the strength buff is always, but just the challenge. Nope. So now a power challenge with Balon and Tris Botley. Looks like it's eight strength. And he's got those uh, Iron Fleet scouts to back him up also. Three characters in the dead pile means that uh, Sansa Stark there at the bottom of the screen with the glare uh, is one one strength right now, I'm pretty sure. Oh, two. Two, actually, because of the Winterfell, giving her a plus one. So I don't... Does he have enough? No, he's just going to block with the uh, last heart scouts there for five. So he'll claim one, gain a renown on Balon. And that's going to be it for challenges. Over to the Stark player. It's going to do Gates of Winterfell. And he sees a frozen solid. And no defenders on the intrigue with Sansa here. Gets a Nightmares. Yeah, he forgot to use the Nightmares on the Winterfell. He said that's why he saved the gold. He's kicking himself that he didn't use it uh, at the start of challenges to make sure Winterfell wasn't given any strength buffs and he wasn't able to trigger it. So a power challenge, stealthing uh, Nighttime Marauders with Arya Stark there to go on a post and steal one. Looks like he's debating using the Northern Armory here. And Dominus goes to Greyjoys. That's going to be it. So Stark player at 9 power. Greyjoy player at 5. I'll remember it. Don't worry. <laughs> They're talking about accidentally standing Northern Armories. But uh, Scott there, the Greyjoy player, is saying, don't worry. I'll remember it. I'll catch you every time. <laughs> I have caught a few opponents. So just, just by default, you just start standing everything without even looking at it. And you have to kind of slap their hand and be like, hey, those northern armories don't stand. And we got nothing burns like the cold into counting coppers. 
So the Greyjay player is choosing himself to go first. He's going to discard an Iron Fleet Scout for his plot. I assume you just get rid of the kneeling Northern Armory. Unless you really need that gold. Or unless he doesn't need the draw, maybe Gates of Winterfell? But yeah, Northern Armory makes sense, the one that's kneeling. So that goes to the discard pile. So we got a Sea Tower knelt there to get the uh, Iron Islands Fishmonger into play. Looks like he has at least, I think, two We Do Not Souls there. He's got the Drown God Fanatic, which he's reading. Maybe three We Do Not Souls are sitting in hand, actually. He's going sit to on, sit on four gold. But his opponent's not letting him get it through an unopposed challenge. So he's able to use it to hit Winterfell. So Frozen Solid removed from the discard pile there using Tris Botley. Plays at a great hall on the Stark side. It's an interesting game. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We're both like, we're struggling at the same time. And start doing okay. One, two, and Nymeria marshaled out there. like uh, a dupe on Winterfell and no gold left on the Stark side over to the Greyjoy player for his challenges. prevented Nighttime Marauders from entering play. He just would have brought him in knelt. It's not a big deal. I just, yeah, I, I don't I, think I, it's really that big of a deal, but yeah, he would have came in knelt. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I missed that also. So military challenge with Nighttime Marauders, Baylon, Greyjoy, and the Stony Stone Shore Raider, whatever it's called. And there is a winter plot out now as the Greyjoy player pointed. On his side, nothing burns like the cold is winter, so Winterfell isn't going to block the Greyjoy player from triggering anything this this uh, round. It'll basically just block the Stark player since he doesn't have a winner plot revealed. So he will be able to use Iron Fleet Scouts if he wants. He's going to defend with the last Hearth Scouts. It's like no, no effects there. He's just trying to kill somebody. He kills the last heart scouts. He's gonna do a power challenge with uh, King Balon for five. Um, all 
So he's going to defend with Arya Stark. Doesn't want to let an unopposed go through. He knows those Weed or Not Souls are a thing in Greyjoy. So he will claim a power. And it looks like that's it for the Greyjoy player. Over to the Stark player for his challenges. Starts off with the Gates of Winterfell. Flips over Mage Mormont. Comes at the Intrigue, which will go unopposed with uh, Sansa Stark. Grabs a Weed or Not So. Military with Nymeria for three. He didn't leave anyone standing here for defense. So no defenders. Kills the Stone Shore Raider. And we have some Intimidate taking down Triss Botley. I think he does have a winner is coming in hand, but he doesn't have the gold to play it. I could get a nice power challenge through here and could have raised the claim, but I guess I'll have to wait for a future turn. So he gets claim and renown from the power challenge. He's going to use the Northern Armory to stand up Rod Stark, trying to win dominance, I guess. Which he's going to do, get some two away from uh, vic the victory here. Greyjoy player sitting at seven power. It's really harsh for the Greyjoy player to not have any intrigue on the board since that first round, playing both those seven causers really really made it hard here for him to do his range triggers. But he, he plays March. And on the other side, we have Forced March. Stark player winning initiative, nine to eight. It's going to trigger March. Uh, so the Stark player is choosing to go first. March to the wall is going to happen. Gets rid of Sansa. And Triss, Bot Triss Botley is marched on the other side. And Force March is going to be triggered twice there with Nymeria to take down Balon also. On top of the Nighttime Marauder. And they'll go to draw. So yeah, it sounds like the Greyjoy player thinks it's over. Probably doesn't have enough to block a Rob Star coming in on a Power Challenge win with Renown. Based on what's in his hand and only having the Iron Islands Fishmonger standing on the board. And Wayman Manderly just adding more strength to that power challenge. Plus Arya Stark with stealth, actually. Yeah, that's it. They're going to call it. He knows he can get through that power challenge. No problem with Rob Stark's renown. And close it out. So that's it. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Uh, we got more coming. Of course, I recorded a couple games per round, bringing two cameras. So we did five rounds of Swiss. So that's ten games of Swiss coming up. Plus the top eight. So lots coming up on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button on the Game of Thrones videos. And I'll see you in the next one.